We're expecting to get an update later this morning from the state health department regarding the number of Hoosiers who have tested positive for COVID-19. As it stands now, the total count is over 4,400. Of those, 54% are women. Right now, COVID-19 has claimed more than 9,500 lives in the United States. But with the nation's death toll rising, President Trump is trying to reassure all Americans. We all know that we have to reach a certain point, and that point is going to be a horrific point in terms of death. But it's also a point at which things are going to start changing. In New York, the death toll is starting to drop. Most states are under a stay-at-home order, but some governors are still refusing, telling people in their states just to focus on social distancing and have a mask with you. Today, we'll get new information on the fight against coronavirus here in Indiana. Matt is live for us downtown, where the state will kind of map out what the new two, the next two weeks of restrictions could mean for businesses and families. Good morning, Matt. Yeah, good morning to you. March 16th, if you can believe that, three weeks ago is when dining rooms were forced to close at all restaurants and bars all across the state, basically making those businesses go to a carryout or delivery only model. That's expected to be continued and extended here today at the State House when the governor is expected to sign a new executive order. Information on your screen shows that nearly two weeks ago as well, back on March 25th, Indiana's stay at home order went into place, which almost feels like January 25th at this point, right? That's also expected to continue. So that, as well as the closure of dining rooms, will continue now through April 20th. That's expected to be signed by an executive order here later this morning. We should also get an update on Indiana latest coronavirus cases. Now, in addition to that, we also know that the travel advisory is also in a place that also is expected to be extended. That includes only traveling for groceries, checking on loved ones, and basically essential travel for essential employees. Now, we'll be here at the State House later today to hear from the governor, including that 10 a.m. update on the latest coronavirus cases here in the state and the latest on that executive order and bring you updates throughout the day ahead here on Channel 13. Ben? And now Britain is one of the deadliest coronavirus hotspots in all of Europe right now after a record 24-hour jump in deaths that surpassed even Italy. Meanwhile, Britain's own Prime Minister Boris Johnson continues to stay in the hospital. Just 10 days after testing positive for COVID-19, his office is describing his hospital stay as a precautionary step. And during a rare televised speech to Britain, Queen Elizabeth is now urging people to show strength right now during this coronavirus crisis. The Queen says she hopes the attributes of self-discipline and quiet, good-humored resolve still characterize her country. And workers at the Bronx Zoo in New York are keeping a close eye on a tiger that's tested positive for COVID-19. The four-year-old tiger was exposed by a zoo worker. She's the first tiger to test positive for the virus. The zoo says six other large cats, including three lions, have also shown symptoms but are expected to recover. Some emergency room workers at Ascension St. Vincent are now learning just how much they're appreciated right now. The fire trucks were out making some noise as firefighters came out to show their love for these local heroes. We talked with John Jonathan Kempler with the Pike Township Fire Department, who was out there yesterday. He says a simple drive-by with a wave and a smile can really make all the difference in the world right now. I hope that it makes a difference and shows them that, that we back them and that we're here to support them. And there are more tributes on the way as the Zionsville Fire Department comes out later today to say their thanks. A lot of people are doing their best to support small businesses right now. But what about the businesses that you can't really help? Meredith Juliet is in the social center in her home, I think, this morning. Good morning, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning, Alyssa. Yes, setting up this social center. Oh my gosh, it has been such a project. Hopefully it looks okay from where you guys are watching at home, but yes. So what do you do if you own a hair salon or a nail salon, something that's a small business that isn't as easily supported? So I spoke with Belinda Benham. Oh, my cat's coming to say hi. I spoke with Belinda Benham. She owns Indy Main Salon over in Fountain Square, and she is just amazing. So they ended up actually shutting their doors about three weeks ago, and they're going to remain closed until at least May. And unlike other small businesses where you can shop online or you can buy gift cards, she says there's nothing that really compares to a day of clients.
clients at the salon. And even being closed for just a day can be really, really hard on a salon. So what can you do? Well, she said non-monetarily, you can help them out on social media. Or even just like posting a selfie and tagging your hairdresser or your hair salon and kind of like spreading awareness, that will help in the future when we can open our doors back again. So other things you can do, as she said, connecting with them on social media, leaving a Yelp review or a Facebook review, she said, is really, really helpful. And another thing, you know, just following along, tagging your hairstylist and being patient because everybody who's been trying to get their hair done, especially for women out there for the past, you know, at the end of this, maybe 10 weeks or so by the time they're able to reopen, is going to be trying to get an appointment. So just making sure that you're patient and working with them. Alyssa. I've been checking in with mine and I said she's going to have a field day with my split ends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Meredith. All right, let's check.